JD had uh, eaten a, a meal and he went after uh, sound check and he went to go lay down. And Elvis called him up about a half hour later and he said, JD, he said, meet me downstairs and let's get something to eat. And he said, well, Elvis, I, 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 just, I just ate a little bit ago and I just laid, want to lay down a little bit before the show. And he said, uh, come down here and meet me and get, let's get something to eat. He said, Elvis, I, I, I just had a, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of food. <laughs> I just want to lay down, can I? And he's like, JD, get down here now. And he said, uh, Elvis, uh, I had no idea how hungry I was. Up and down Broadway, across the avenues, East Nashville to West End, Belmont and Bellevue, Midtown, Franklin, Green Hills, Redwood, Donaldson, and Hendersonville. The people, the places, the lifestyle, living, laughing in the 615. Hello, welcome to the Pod 615 with your host, William Kitchens, your Nashville music, dine, shop, arts, and entertainment podcast. This episode features session and touring musician, Link Denton. Link currently performs with the frontman of country. The group features the popular 90s country music superstars, Larry Stewart with Restless Heart, Richie McDonald of Lone Star, and Tim Rushlow from Little Texas. William sat down with Link to discuss not only his current gig with these hitmakers, but to share stories from his entire career. These include iconic award-winning musicians, such as Jeff Cook from Alabama, James Burton, guitarist with Ricky Nelson and Elvis Presley, and even a stage appearance with Sir Brian May of Queen. Link, how are you? Doing good, buddy. How you doing? Man, I am doing fantastic. You've been doing so much. Tell us about this uh, the gig you have with the front men. These guys are fantastic. You got the, the front men of country is Larry Stewart, Richie McDonough, and, of course, Tim Rushlaw with uh, Little Texas, Lone Star, and uh, Restless Heart. Um, Link, how's that tour going? You guys are doing a lot of dates this fall. Yeah, man, we got we got really lucky, with especially just coming out of the, the pandemic and things opening back up again. So we this year we'll probably do 35 or 36 dates by the end of the year. And some of these are full band productions, and some are acoustic. Yeah, some are yeah, some are acoustic, and uh, and also full band. But next year they're going to be planning on having just they want full band. They don't, you know, when RK and and Matthew isn't there, it's just not it's not the same, you know. I mean, Larry after the show is like, man, we need we need the guys, and I'm like, no kidding. So next year they're planning on doing all band dates. Good. Yeah. Full disclosure, I've known Link for, for many, many years. I know his history. I met him first doing stand up comedy at the uh, what was the theater called the Stardust Theater. The Stardust Theater on Music Valley Drive. First time I met him, the guy was a riot. He was tearing up the house. He was opening for himself, basically, because he was in the show. <laughs> right. So he came out and he did the warm-up for yeah. for himself and then, then came out and played guitar with the uh, tribute band there. But tell us about comedy. How did you get involved in comedy? Your father was a professional comedian, right? Yes, Frank? he was a comedy writer. Frank Link was a uh, professional comedian and uh, a musician. And uh, I kind of grew up, just basically grew up around it. And uh, I found out that you can be funny and then play a song, then be funny and play a song and make a living off of that. So I'm like, hell, you know, it beats the same paper or plastic. So, but, And your mother was a big part of that influence as well, right? Now, she, yeah, she she absolutely was. She's like the unsung hero, you know. She uh, taught me how to sing harmony. And she was my biggest fan. Bought me my first acoustic when I was nine. Got me my first... Uh, I remember uh, coming home from my garage band. They're like, "I'm showing up in a garage band with a with a Yamaha acoustic and with a microphone up to it, playing through an eight inch speaker." It was awesome. And they're like, "You need an electric guitar." And I'm like, "Well, what do I get?" And uh, they're like, "Get you a Fender Stratocaster." And I'm like, "Sure." So she's like writing down Fender Stratocaster. And I came home from school like two weeks later, and there it was on my bed. And she got me a little a little lamp to go with it, and just started me off. I mean, she was at every gig. She was because top forty bands followed later on. So but, she uh, didn't mind you taking that eight inch woofer out of her uh, Magnamont stereo <laughs> right. Wi Fi, right out of the back, of hot her. rodding it into the uh, Radio Shack, out of the back of her Honda Civic. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> eight inch speaker. Yeah. You know. Your dad, right, though, he was on Carson. He wrote for... Uh, well, he wrote a joke for Carson, yeah. Back in those days, you could in the 70s, you could be a ghostwriter on some stuff. So he knew the guys, some of the guys in the band. Uh, he used to hang out with Tommy Newsom in uh, in L.A. and go down to this jazz club and get up and sing. He was also an amazing singer, too. Uh, he did a Merv Griffin. 
Uh, he was on there with Dom DeLuise and Kay Ballard, and I think seventy four ish. And uh, but yeah, he wrote a joke for Carson and, and got it in during the uh, the gas crunch. Okay, so right now you're touring the front men of country. Great group. That's Larry Stewart from Russell's Heart, Richie McDonald from Lone Star, and Tim Rushlow from Little Texas. Rush that's, that's a lot to say. It is. That's a lot of hits. <laughs> it's ninety minutes of number ones, man, and they they have over thirty main records sold between all of them and. Uh, 17 number ones it's just ridiculous and we talked before the show and uh the taping and uh you told me that uh i mentioned songs that aren't even in the top 10 hits they're not even in the show that's incredible that you can do 90 minutes and still leave out oh yeah and that many may yeah, have at least nine or, nine or ten other huge hits you know not counting top 10 hits or top 20 hits who was the first guitar player you heard that made you go hey i uh, want to do that george benson Okay. That was my that was my first concert. That Your was first fir- concert my was fir- George Benson. Yeah, George Benson. <laughs> I tell me because you, I remember my first concert was Glenn Campbell. Oh wow! At the Charlotte Convention Center. There you at go. Charlotte Arena Coliseum. Yeah, in Charlotte when I was like uh, 12, 13 years old. So where was George Benson for you? Uh, Bayfront Center in St. Pete, Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, man. I remember working at Publix Bakery, washing dishes in the bakery, and I saved up my money and. And uh, went down there. I was just blown away. I mean, just no effects, no delay, no verb. Just an Ibanez plugged into whatever he was plugged into. And just, uh, I don't know why, but uh, I attribute that to my mom and dad because they love cool music. They, I grew up with like Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Carol King and uh, The Fifth Dimension and uh, Bread and just, just, a whole, uh, just a whole big grab bag of stuff. Oh, well, it's true. We we growing up had the better bands. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, call me old, whatever. You know, you, old. You you can keep your keep your bands of today, and I'll I'll you know, I'll okay, stick with I'll stick Vincent, with that. Wow. So, what was the song that made you want to go hear George? You have a favorite? Like for me, Glenn Campbell. It was Galveston. Oh, absolutely. So, the, what was the George Benson song that you were sitting in the seat? Mas- masquerade. Yep. Masquerade or uh, the instrumental stuff, like off his uh, Affirmation album. Affirmation or twenty five or was it uh, six to four it was a song called six to four. But I used to go to bed every night with a Bell and Howe tape recorder next to my head and just hit play and turn it down like on three and just lay on my side, man, and go to bed to that and Steve Martin comedy albums and Richard Pryor comedy albums and <laughs> Steve Martin. So there's yes. an influence right for you. Say college. funny and funny and music. There you go. You just chose guitar instead of banjo. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of work. There's a lot of comedy in banjo. Though. <laughs> there's, there is. Yeah, I'm sure. What's your favorite banjo joke? I know you've got one. I've got a yeah. There's a million of them. Uh, I just have to say, uh, oh man, what, what does a tornado and a and a banjo solo have in common? What you can see them both coming. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> we Good. don't we don't have full production here. We're having to use a, a hand. <laughs> Make our own sound effects here. Can you give me a rim shot? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You've been on the road with a lot of people. Jeff Cook in the Country Music Hall of Fame, and he's also working with James Burton, Elvis's guitar player, Rick Nelson. Oh, everybody. Got, yeah, who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So you, you've you had the pleasure of working with two Hall of Fame members, one in country and one in rock and roll. Let's talk about Jeff Cook first. Tell us about that experience. Man, uh, uh, pretty much a third of my life. I mean, the last five or six years, he hasn't been able to play because of Parkinson's which is just tragic, can't even, you know, it blows my mind to see somebody who was just at the top, you know, and slowly taken away. But uh, for 16 years, uh, 16 years, man, all over the all over the United States and doing, uh, we did uh, a lot of studio work. We redid some Alabama songs for our projects and stuff and got to, when you get to play with your heroes, you know, it's just, it's surreal. And then when they, when they become dear friends, because a lot of people that uh, I played for, you, you know, you know, you, you keep that, you know, you're the band and you're the artist. And but he he and I just hit it off with funny and guitars from day one. And I mean, dear friend. And I know this, and I want you to share it with the listeners today. Tell us about getting cooked. What does it mean to get cooked by Jeff Cook? That's when a, you share that joke and he uh, oh oh oh, 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 oh that, that oh yeah he would poker face he would I, I tell him a joke I was his ghost writer for 16 years on stage I could literally lean in his ear and go you know whatever I would say and then he'd walk up to the microphone and say it and then he'd get the laugh 
and and like look at me like what and i'm like this is my line dude <laughs> It was my line again. We'd be sitting at dinner, 20 people, and I'd lean over and say something in his ear, and then he'd look at me like poker face, and then not laugh, and then turn to everybody and say the same thing, the joke or whatever it was, and kill, and I never gave me credit. Oh, that's... It became like an inside thing after a while. <laughs> Your favorite, uh, favorite Alabama song? Yeah. My home's in Alabama. There you go. Favorite venue you ever played? Uh -oh. On all these tours that you've done, what's what's the best venue you ever played? The best? Well, Who are your favorite? Your play, favorite? Well, playing the Ryman, playing the Ryman in 2001 with Dobie Gray was 13 minutes of amazing that I'll never okay. forget. That's pretty much the trump card right there. You're songwriting now, too, with Dwayne Hitchens, who wrote huge Rod Stewart hits. What, Young Turks, uh, yeah, Do Young, You Think I'm Sexy, and... Uh, in infatuation. Infatuation. Yeah, he co-wrote all those, yeah. And now you're writing with him. You've written a new song, a song idea you came up with called Racing the Rain. Yeah. That you just co-wrote with Dwayne? No, uh, ac actually, I, I had the, here's the magic of Don Goodman, who was the other writer on it. Uh, Don uh, wrote uh, Old Red for George Jones, and then, of course, Blake cut it in Shelton, and it was his first number one. But uh, when I brought the song idea in, I had the first verse written, I had the melody, I had... Uh, and he liked my first verse, except the opening line is uh, living on the edge of Watertown. And I had uh, me and my family are on solid ground. And then he said, and then he, uh, the next couple lines he liked and wanted to keep. But he said, what if we take that second line and we flip it and we go, I ain't never been on solid ground, which gives you and racing the rain is like a metaphor for whatever, whatever you're racing. And, you know, you're staying trying to stay ahead of you know, whatever that, that, that is in your life, you know, whatever that problem is. So just by doing that switch of that line, changed the entire song for what it needed to be. You know, it was just, and what a cool old cat. He's been, he's been around for 50 years in town, you know, with everybody. Living on the edge of water town Ain't never been on solid ground Daddy worked hard every day 60 hour a week for 40 hour pay Every time the sun tried to shine on us Out of the blue a storm came up Shower turned into a flood Left everything we owned in the Tennessee mud I keep raising the rain, but I just can't seem to win. I keep chasing the blame, the clouds keep rolling in. Love, life, and blue skies are subject to change. I keep praying for sunshine, racing the rain. First time love ever came around Was a blue-eyed girl from Watertown The night before our wedding day Showed me how a heart could break I keep racing the rain But I just can't seem to win I keep chasing the flame but the clouds keep rolling in Love, life, and blue skies Are subject to change I keep praying for sunshine And race in the rain I'll keep racing the rain until I finally win. I'll keep chasing the flame. I never give a in. Love, life, and blue skies are subject to change. But I'll keep praying for sunshine. 
grace in the rain. Living on the edge of Watertown, ain't never been on solid ground. All right, that's a beautiful song, Link. Tell me about how that, uh, what inspired that idea? Going down 40, 40 East, and I've seen the sign Watertown for, you know, forever, passing it. And for some reason, uh, I just, I went, living on the edge of Watertown. And then that, the only line I had, and I thought, I like that melody. And I like that, because there's a Watertown in, any, in, in the United States. In every state, there's a Watertown somewhere. So I thought that, you know, that could be a good connection for folks to relate to. And then when I took it into the guys, to Don and to Dwayne, uh, Don turned it around and said, you know, I've had this hook forever called Racing the Rain. What if we make it about Watertown, but we don't leave that as the hook and use, you know, Racing the Rain as the hook and see if it works. And it it did, man. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, man. James Burton, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Tell me about that. What's that like? He's still out there gigging, doing things. You just played with him not recently, uh, well, right before the pandemic, at TPAC, right? His, uh... No, we were at the Skirmahorn, the Nashville Symphony Center. Yes, okay. With those, those, those guys. What's his name? Oh, Brian May. Oh, that guy? <laughs> yeah, Joe Walsh. Let me see. More gratuitous name dropping. It, it's, it's, it got ridiculous Is there after a while. there a skunk in the house? There was a skunk Baxter there. It was a skunk sighting. There was uh, Joe Walsh. There was Sammy Hagar. There was Steve Cropper, Paul Schaefer, Jason Sheff from Chicago, uh, Mickey Dolans. Who uh, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, right. My Me. Agent, my agent. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Me. James Burton. So that's his charity thing. Is is that going to happen again soon? Or? Yes. And there, as a matter of fact, uh, is it scheduled? we picked a couple times this week together. We picked for about uh, two hours on uh, last Wednesday and last Thursday. We picked for a couple hours because he hurt, he hurt his hand last month. He fell. And uh, the man's 82 and plays his rear end off like, I mean, just still at the top of his game. It's quite amazing. Actually, you know, how healthy he is and how just smooth he is and his tone. And it's just ridiculous. But, From Ricky uh, Nelson to Elvis I, Presley. Yeah, right. To Susie Q. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know? You know, and, and the opening lick on uh, on uh, uh, Hard Working Man for Merle. That opening yeah. telecast, that's James. Man. I mean, it just goes on. That guy's just ridiculous. But uh, they're working on something in England right now for us because we were supposed to go over in 2020 into England. Because we did it in 2019, November. So when everything hit, you know, four months later with the pandemic, that was all put on the back burner. But now they're, they're talking about it again to do it. And what's uh, the event called? It's James Burton's All-Star? Yeah, yeah J- James Burton and Friends. James Burton and Friends. Yeah. And, uh, they're so looking this year it'll be overseas? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're looking to do it at, uh, at uh, Albert Hall. Uh, you're going to get to go play at Albert Hall? And they're talking about Robert Plant. They're talking Pete Townsend. They're talking Paul McCartney. They're talking to all the Sir friends. Paul McCartney. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should genuflect when I say that. Oh, man. Yes. I'm so, jealous. So. But tell me, all right, so the, the event they held in Nashville was incredible. Yeah. It was a star-studded night, and you got – tell us the Brian May story because I've heard this story. I want the listeners to hear about your encounter with uh, – Oh, Mr. Mr. May. Mr. May. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wow. Okay. We're we're uh, we're doing our segment in the show because I brought Larry in, Larry Stewart from Restless and Greg Jennings from Restless Heart. And they wanted to do a tribute to Glenn Campbell because James played on all Glenn Campbell stuff. So we, with the inspirations, we I had to leave the band <laughs> and go up to the center like in this half moon of chairs, just with my knees knocking. And Brian is sitting at rehearsal. He's sitting all by himself in the center of the theater, this four thousand seater theater. And he's sitting by himself in that white hair and his hands resting on his hands. I mean, his head resting on his hands and just, just listening. Like a college professor no, with yeah, tenure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no no handlers, no entourage, just, just by himself. Just by himself, just hanging out. And I'm like, dude, go to lunch. Because, you know, I touch back here and there's Skunk Baxter. And I look over here and there's Sammy Hagar and everybody's watching us rehearse, you know. And I'm like, just trying to get through it. And so we break for lunch. And... I go and I'm uh, I'm eating a sandwich and he walks in the room. I'm like, oh, there he is, and he's getting closer. He's getting closer, and uh, and he walks up and he goes, 
uh, I can't do a British accent, but he's like Link. And I'm like, you remember my name? And uh, <laughs> you're the guy. And he goes, uh, <laughs> he goes, uh, so he says, he says, your eye, your high airy wispy harmonies are essential for any band harmony to work. And I'm just looking up at him and I, I said, thank you. He said, your, your voice is beautiful. And I said, thank you. And he said, your guitar playing is amazing. And I'm like, well, can you, you know, write that down? So when I tell people they you know, they believe me and he goes, uh, he said, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> and I'm like, let's see. Was okay. It, was it Live Aid? No, no. Let me think. Was it, you know, you know where La Hacienda is? Uh, no. Mexican restaurant I played? No. no. Yeah, the one over the other. Let's see. Was it Wembley, like, Wembley Stadium? Was it? No. I'm pretty sure you don't know me, dude. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure you don't know me. And he goes, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, okay. Cuckoo. No, you don't know me from anywhere, sir. And I'm like, remember that one time you were in Queen? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. What not then? Uh, so... Anyway, he walks on. He goes, we'll talk later. And I was like, so I went in the bathroom and had a moment and came back out and went back to rehearsing. And there he was again. And I'm like, oh, you guys are killing me. So real quick, we're doing 25 or 6 to 4 with Jason Chef. Jason comes out with him, sing 25 or 6 to 4. And uh, so Brian's supposed to come out and play a solo on it. So wah na 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 wah na 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 It's happening at rehearsal. And so, but he doesn't know the, the breakdown. Sitting cross-legged on the floor, 25 or 64. He doesn't know that section at all. So at rehearsal, he just turns and looks at me, and his eyes are really big. And, and I go, because <laughs> it's so loud, all the guitars are happening, and I, I just scream. I'm like, F, C, G, and another F, and that's it. There's only two sections, sir. He went, thank you. I'm like, you're welcome. He walked, turned around and started playing. Well, he does another verse. Jason sings, and then that section comes up again. He turns around, same look. And I go, F, C, G, another F, and that's it, sir. There's only two sections. So he's like, thank you. I'm like, thank you. And so we finished the song. So we we get through, and in the show, there, there's, there's footage. It's just, I wish you could see his face because... He turns he turns to me on stage when we're doing 25 or 64 and nobody all you see is me laugh and, and everybody's like why are you laughing at Brian May I'm like I'm not laughing at him I'm laughing at the face he made he turns to me and when he gets to that section he's playing an F chord and he like like huh I see I got it yeah. they played the C and he's like look at that I got it I remembered what you said I remembered you know and then he gave me a wink and did his rock and roll thing that he does you know the iconic you know yeah. fist in the air and I'm like I had the country music measles I mean my, my just <laughs> I did I did it was I was like wow this so the day Link Denton gave Brian May guitar lessons <laughs> uh, no I just I just yelled F See, he knew the chords. He like did. you were playing the second floor at Tootsie's. Ah, uh, man, I'm yeah. telling you. And I, out. I also I went, there would have been numbers then. Though. <laughs> right. I went, you oh. yell at the F, F at Tootsie's, they look at you like, where are you from, boy? <laughs> you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> that ain't a... <laughs> That's a four, son. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you pack your stuff and get out of here. Hope you're enjoying this episode of the Pod 615 with William Kitchens. Be sure to follow the show on your favorite social media platform and podcast listening service. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for a great advertising opportunity, be sure to check out the advertising section on our website. Visit us online at pod615.com. We'd love to feature your business here. So your relationship with James brought you to this. How did that start with uh, James? With my old country partner, Gary Bridges, who okay. produced the show and uh, got me on in the all-star band. And I played for James and James, we hit it off. And then the next thing you know, I'm... So you're just hobnobbing around with, let's see, Brian May, <laughs> Jeff Cook, James Burton, Larry Stewart... <laughs> You and Larry become really good friends. Obviously. Absolutely, you guys yeah. are like best well, friends. He wouldn't. And, uh, he wouldn't tell you that. Richie McDonald, yeah. <laughs> Mr. McDonald, yeah. you know, eating wings on the bus. I don't know. Just having a good time, man. That, that's pretty much the life. Is that what you grew up wanting to do? Yes, absolutely. And it came true. 
It did. It got. And did you ever think when you were hearing Bohemian Rhapsody? No, playing with a tennis racket. I used to have dress rehearsal like everybody did, right? Yeah. Uh, in your bedroom when you're, you're 15, yeah. 16, you have dress rehearsal, you know. And uh, I had an electric guitar that wasn't plugged in. That was my dad, one of my dad's friend's guitars. And then that went away, so I had to go back to tennis racket. But I, I played a pretty good tennis broom. racket. I had a broom and a hair rush for a mic. Nice, see? I used to do yeah. screwdriver. Yeah. The screwdriver? Yeah, for a microphone. <laughs> Not the drink, an okay, actual, well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That can work. Oh, yeah, which reminds me, too. Your brother owns a liquor store somewhere, doesn't he? We should give him a plug. He's getting a free plug. If you're ever in what part of Kentucky? Louisville, Kentucky. In Louisville. If you're up in Louisville, you got to go to where? You know, I don't know the name of his liquor store. Oh, that's embarrassing. He's going to hear this. That's horrible. Uh, a we'll lot, try to get, lo- it. We'll lots try of to liquor. get it put it in the show notes. And lots of liquor. Lots of liquor. That's good. <laughs> I did a commercial for a – for a. Uh, I wrote a jingle for a, a – uh, Liquor store in Columbus. And no, I, I shouldn't have prefaced that. I got a call from a radio station. They said, uh, hey, we need you to write a jingle for uh, this company we have that wants a jingle called Kicking Chicken. And I'm thinking, Kicking Chicken? That's what, barbecue, you know? Some kind of, no, it's a liquor store in Columbus, Georgia. Kicking Chicken. Kicking because you think liquor. You think, yeah. oh, there was, we just did uh, two shows up in, uh, did one in Wisconsin last Friday and Saturday. We were in Springfield, Missouri with the Frontman thing. And there's a liquor store there in Wisconsin, and the name of it was Liquor and Cheese. <laughs> I swear. I'm not connecting those dots. I'll let you. I'll let you do it. I swear to you. I thought, wow, you got two things. Not wine and cheese, but liquor. Li- liquor and cheese. Liquor yeah, and cheese. there you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Once again, we're here with Link Denton, Nashville session player, musician, songwriter, comic, a little bit of everything. One of the coolest things he's ever told me is he's had a chance not only working with James Burton, but you've worked with Charlie Hodge and some of the guys. And yeah, J.D. Sumner, the Stamps. And, and, the, and the best story ever, the Elvis <laughs> spaghetti story. Oh, yeah. Where you got to tell me the Elvis well, they, spaghetti they get, story. Well, they get into Houston to do a show, and J.D. had uh, eaten a, a meal and he went after uh, sound check, and he went to go lay down. And Elvis called him up about a half hour later, and he said, J.D., he said, meet me downstairs, and let's get something to eat. And he said, well, Elvis, I, 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 just, I just ate a little bit ago, and I just laid, want to lay down a little bit for the show. And he said, uh, come down here and meet me, and get, let's get something to eat. He said, Elvis, I, I, I just had a, uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of food. <laughs> I just want to lay down, can I? And he's like, J.D., get down here now. And he said, uh, Elvis, uh, I had no idea how hungry I was. <laughs> he said, he said when, he, when he puts it like that, you go. I said, did you eat? He said, yeah, I, I ate again. I was miserable. <laughs> but he, he made him eat. And Elvis had that effect on people, if I understand. Charlie Hodge, give me your favorite Charlie Hodge story. Oh, boy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Charlie Hodge was the man who played acoustic guitar with Elvis yep. and handed him his famous scar. So yeah. if any of you out there have a... Have an Elvis scarf. It first came from Charlie. Yeah, uh, my one of my favorite stories from him was uh, the infamous day where Elvis bought five five cars in one day, five Cadillacs in one day, and he passed them out to friends. And Charlie was one of them. And Charlie, if if anybody who knows, Charlie was a little guy. Charlie was you know probably five three, five four. I mean, you could see his feet in his driver's license picture. He's a little dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little dude. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> And he said that Elvis gave him the Cadillac, and he come up uh, the driveway, Graceland, and Elvis just saw his knuckles <laughs> as, he, as he was driving on the steering wheel. And he said he was going to take the car back. And he's like, oh, he begged him. He's like, Elvis, please don't take this car back. So Charlie went and got a couple of phone books <laughs> and sat on the phone books to make himself look taller so Elvis wouldn't take the car from him. And he, he still had that uh, pretty much up until he died. He had that Cadillac. He had it in storage. That's a great story. What's your favorite uh, road story? You got one. You've you've been you've been so many places, been with so many people. You have a favorite story that stands out. <laughs> Actually, I do. Uh, our mutual friend, Mister R. K. Brown. Oh, this is going to be great. For those of you who don't know, R. K. Brown is a uh, uh, another well-respected uh, musician here in Nashville from Atlanta. He's toured with he 
played with Jeff Cook as well. And he did for eight years. Tours with Curtis Mayfield. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah he goes way back. Uh, he, we won't tell his age, but uh, he, well, he, he's he and one are the of same us. age. We're eight hours apart. That's right. You guys same day, the same, same year. Day. What's your RK story? Oh, man. he's uh, This is all in love, RK. <laughs> this is all love, brother. Uh, we get off the bus with Cook, and we're in uh, somewhere. And we went to this place to get something to eat. And uh, for those who don't know RK, RK is uh, visually impaired. So so we get off the bus, and uh, we're, he's, he's looking up, and the lady said, can I help you? And he's, like, squinting, looking at the at the menu. And he's like, well, uh, he's squinting really hard. And he goes, I think, I think I'll have a, a, a burrito supreme and two soft tacos, please. And she says, sir, you're at Wendy's. <laughs> and I'm like, here's the part that, that throws me. You looked up there and saw Brito Supreme and two soft tacos, and they're not up there. <laughs> or, my, or my other favorite, where you go to the, we're playing uh, Branson. And uh, don't tell anybody. And uh, so... We go to breakfast. They cook us breakfast. And RK, uh, and they had a, like a, a banquet thing where he walked up and you know get everything buffet style. So RK comes back and he loved he loves orange juice. He used, to, he used to drink it with every meal. And so he sits down. He's got a styrofoam cup. He's sitting there and uh, he takes a drink out of his cup and he spits it out everywhere. And I'm like, Are you? What's wrong? He said this orange juice is bad. And it was waffle batter. <laughs> So for the, gonna, for the rest gonna, of that for the rest of that wink, I, I was like, "Hey, better, better, hey, better, drink." <laughs> okay, we can't tell the uh, the um, hot fudge Shoney story, can we? We can't tell. No, no, we, no. I don't. We're think, not gonna, I think we're gonna leave that we're out. We're gonna leave yes. that one out. <laughs> yes. You see Link on the road somewhere? Pull him aside. He'll tell you that story <laughs> for a small fee. We can't tell about the carpenter song either, can we? Can we? Is that no? I don't think there's a no. No, we can't do that one either. No, there's so many great stories. We'll have to we'll have to have a different episode for <laughs> with a disclaimer, right? Sure. Warning labels attached to it. Uh, is there anyone you'd love to perform with? Do you haven't had a chance to yet? Wow. And, Living yeah. today. Is Paul, there any? Yeah. Paul McCartney or, yeah. or Garth? Yeah, that would yeah. be pretty amazing. Yeah. Have you considered creating your own business podcast? If you're an expert in your field or simply want to engage your customers, then you should. Guess what? Pod 615 offers professional corporate podcast production, editing, and publishing. With a wide variety of services to choose from, we can give voice to your business. Reach out to us on social media or the internet to learn more about featured and branded podcast production from Pod 615. All right, once again, we're here with Link Denton, touring musician, session player, singer, songwriter, comic extraordinaire. Tell us, you've told us some funny stories on the road. What has been the strangest thing that's ever happened to you on the road? Strangest. Well, I had to say there was a... I when I was playing with uh, this Elvis impersonator, who I, Gary Bridges, who's my, who turned out to be my country partner for like twelve years, uh, I was in his Elvis show, and that's how I got to meet. Uh, he was like one of the number one impersonators in the country. So Charlie came out with us, and Eddie and Ick and Larry Strickland and Kathy Westmoreland, and everybody, everybody came out. It was bizarre to hear their stories, but there was a fan at one of the shows, and Bridge and I were talking. Right before the show, of course, he wore a wig and he wore, you know, the. the did all the makeup and the whole nine yards and he had the, the sideburns and you know, the the jumpsuit the whole i mean it, it was elvis i mean his voice was amazing it still is but uh a fan comes up and i i was kidding around right before we went on and i was like hey man if <laughs> if i don't get a raise after this show i'm the wig's coming off right in the middle of the trilogy okay i'm, I'm popping the wig you said that to to, to bridge yeah, to, yeah, okay. to gary bridges yeah to bridge i said you know uh, give me a raise or um the wig's off and a fan and, witnesses and, 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 and dude a fan i mean he got he got all creepy fat i mean like and he uh this is 1986 87 and uh he looked at me and he goes you know not talk about gary's wig like that and i'm like excuse me and he said i'm gonna show you something 
I'm like, okay. And he reaches in his pocket and he has a Polaroid of Bridge in the Elvis outfit kissing this guy's wife on the cheek. And he goes, you see this? That's Elvis kissing my wife. And I'm like, hmm, only thing missing here is a, dimini is a diminished chord. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, yeah. I'm like, sure it is. Yeah. Yes, crazy person. There you go. Yeah. Bye. Tell me about the strangest request you ever got from a woman who came up to you. You told me this earlier. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can tell it. I mean, you know. Yeah, you could tell that story. It wasn't anything bad. It was just. With the curse word? Her response? With the curse word? With the curse word? We'll bleep it out. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Tell a story. All right. She comes up to you. So you're standing on stage, you know, you're playing, and somebody, you're doing a big event for, we won't say the company yeah. name or anything. We'll just say you're doing a big event, yeah. a corporate event. Right. And a lady comes up. and Yes, this Southern Southern Belle type woman, about 73, 74, had long gray hair and very well dressed and, you know, just just crowd, just real country, and just come up. And she said, baby, it's me and my me and my husband's 45th wedding anniversary tonight. And, and would you play something for us? And I'm like, well, yes, ma'am. You know, a sweet little lady. And I'm looking at her trying to think. And I said, well, do you have any songs in mind? And she's like, uh, I really don't. And so, I, you know, looking at her, you know, I, I thought, well, uh, I, said, <laughs> I said, how about uh, Wonderful Tonight? You know, Eric Clapton. And she said, uh, I'll f*** that song. I f hate that song. And I'm like, damn, Nana, uh, coming in hot, okay? <laughs> I mean, I think I could take her, but, I mean, she she looks, she, she looks a little sturdy. But, uh, yeah. She, all she had to do was just say no. give you a song. Yeah, or go, no, I don't care for that, whatever. But, no, you know, the, yelled that at me, and I was, I was just, I couldn't believe that came out of her face. And then she settled on No Woman, No Cry for Bob Marley to dance to your 45th wedding anniversary tune. Well, that's great. Good for her, and you probably did it, didn't you? I well, yes, our keyboard player did. I didn't know. There it. you go. I didn't know it. That's what we do. <laughs> we'll do anything for twenty dollars. <laughs> well, that's well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I get most of my gigs. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seen that T-shirt? Twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you ask? <laughs> something, something on Broadway, I would imagine. What's your favorite Broadway story when you used to? Performed down in at, at Tootsie's one time. Or you were at Tootsie's, the band on the second level. Yeah, was, yeah, the what? band. Yeah, the band in the back. I was subbing for some guy, and and the band down in front. When the band in front got through with a song, we would play the exact same song, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody noticed. <laughs> but we were dying. It's like should they get with the fireman? We play the fireman. When boots good and boogie, we play boots good. I mean, it's like Just, back to back. Uh, just 50 feet away. Just the echo, echo oh, set list. There's a friend of mine, a funny story, and uh, that I'll leave his name out. He's a dear friend of mine. He used to, uh, anyway, I can't say that either. You'd find out who he was. But uh, he was playing, and he was really not happy with the band. Not at all. In the back room at Tootsie's. So in the middle of, middle of playing, like an hour and a half, two hours into it, he puts his guitar on a stand. He said, i got to go to the bathroom. And he leaves, and he walks out in front and gets in a cab and goes home. Just leaves his gig. Just leaves. His brother was on the gig. He knew his brother would get take his guitar. brother would take his rig home. So he got in the cab and left. And then <laughs> I'm like, how awesome is that? Just that disgusted with the band. <laughs> just, just put it I gotta down. Go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. And then tail. Oh, I've had gigs where I've actually had to go to the bathroom and been gone that long because, you know, I'm at that age now. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they think, what do you do? Get in a cab? I don't know. Or do you know, somebody no. see an Uber pull up? I don't know. He, He's still in there. He's been gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that lady didn't want Wonderful Tonight. I mean, that's uh, that's the go-to. Wow, man. Yeah, she, That's the go-to. I've never heard anybody react that way to Wonderful Tonight. Me neither. Tonight. I mean, she, I mean, there was... Other than other musicians in the band, when you say, hey, we're going to do Wonderful Tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. And <laughs> they, then, have that, they have that response. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that in Purple Rain. But, uh, yeah, man, she was upset. I mean, she had, like, bitter party of one, your table is ready. Best tip you ever got playing now on Broadway. Uh, more than 100? Did you ever get more than 100? Uh, yeah. Uh, there, there's a, okay, a guy one night I was doing a gig up in Hendersonville 
and doing my solo uh, a comedy thing. And the crowd, nothing I threw at them. I had my tracks and playing, you know, electric with it. And from 7 to 11. And this is like 1035. And I've thrown everything at them. I've thrown every country, every dance, funky music, brick house, brown eyed girl, whatever I could possibly. And these people just collectively did not care on this night. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's the crowd. Sorry. Sometimes it's the crowd, man. I mean, I threw everything at them and nothing. 10.35, now they're drunk and now they wake up and I got 25 minutes left. Now they are dancing. Now they have to play all these songs over again because I already played them and now they're dancing. So I'm... Why are you leaving? We just yeah, getting yeah, started. Yeah, exactly. So 11 o'clock comes and they're like, you know, and earlier this guy walks up like about the second set. He walks up and he throws a 20 in my bucket. I'm going to thank you, sir, very much. So... Uh, 11 o'clock comes I go I, I time to go and then, oh, and then uh, the club owner went you know you play over extra if you want you know he'd take care of me I'm like sure cool thank you so I'm like I'm here for the you know next little bit and we gotta pass that you know but take the jug around you know and here we go if you're awake and drunk then you can put some money in this jar so everybody passes it around and it was great and it comes back and I'm packing up as I'm packing up the guy that gave me the 20 earlier walks up and he goes can I get my 20 back please and I, I, I'm just wrapping a cord, and I'm, uh, I go, yeah. I thought, yeah, man, you know, yeah, you know. You need it more than I do. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, sure. I said, yeah, yeah. So he reaches in and gets his twenty, and he throws a hundred in. He took oh, it. Oh, you played those cards correct. <laughs> Didn't know the card though. <clears throat> but just, you played it correct. Yeah, yeah, right. He goes. Yes. He, he goes. You not. He goes. You need this. You don't well need played, this. Sir. So well like, played, sir. Well played. Yes. Was that a test? Because yeah. It was. Yep. Absolutely wasn't it. Link, yes. great to have you. Great to have you on the show. It's always good to see you. You're always smiling, always happy. Great music, great th song. Thanks for sharing that with us. Much success. And I look forward to talking to you uh, after the next encounter with uh, Brian May. Yeah, I hope that comes soon. Over across the pond. Let's say. do it, man. That's all right. you got to work on that British accent. Thank you, William. Thank you, man. Stay well. <laughs> You've been listening to Link Denton on the Pod 615 with host William Kitchens. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on this or your favorite listening platform for upcoming episodes. Find us easily on the web and all social media apps with a quick search for Pod 615. That's P-O-D and the numbers 615. And hey, let us know what you think about the show. And always, support your local national musicians, artists, venues, and businesses here in the 615 and Middle Tennessee. Thanks for listening.